Good morning, everybody. Welcome Monday morning before opening day to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports and trying to just pick up where the legend left off and just keep it on rolling. How about that? Good morning, everybody. The chat room, I want to see you guys stay with me this morning because we're going to talk about a lot of players. We're going to talk about some things I saw this weekend and we're going to share that. Andrea, good morning. I'm going to talk to Andrea hopefully later today. We'll Planning to do a video cast. Yes, the initial video cast for Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. I'm planning to try to do that Tuesday night after Phil Chaplin. So you want to stay tuned for that. Chappie and I will be together. We will be previewing the 2020 season. There you go. Andrea, DeMazins, Donkey, Oki, Doug Boyle, Ed Heckman, Lenny, Phil Chaplin, Taco. Star Dog. I like that Star Dog name. And then we got three or four guests, and hopefully, some more will be joining us soon as we talk about what is getting ready to happen on Thursday and what we saw this weekend. And I think what I'd like to do this morning is just sort of do, do us a little preview. Last night, I watched the Mets and the Yankees, I watched the entire nine innings, even though they should have only played eight and a half. And I also watched the Yankees and Mets all game Saturday night. So I drew a few things from those games. And, and I realized, first of all, it's a preseason practice kind of game. It doesn't count yet. But I've never played a game where I didn't try my best. So we'll see how that goes. I pay attention to batting orders. I pay attention to pitchers. Mets. Let's talk about the Mets first. I'm going to talk about them. Then I'm going to spend most of the show today on the American League East. But the Mets, they have Cano hitting third. They have Cespedes hitting fourth. Cespedes played both games. And frankly, I'm impressed that he played the outfield three innings last night. Dominique Smith came in to take his place. Did not look good on a fly ball hit to left field. I don't think Jonas Cespedes is a gold glover. I think he's showing me that he can run it out to first base. That was one concern. I saw him leg out. A, he was actually called out on review, but it was a swinging bunt at third, and Gio Ursula makes a great play Saturday night, throws him out, just bang, bang. They initially called him safe. Then they overturned it and went without. But the fact that they were able to use the replay on Jonas Cespedes running out a ground ball tells me Jonas Cespedes is in pretty good shape. Thank you, Phil Chaplin. I like that you say I'm sounding good. And King Hap, my shirt looks good on you. I'm just saying. looks good on me. Excuse me. I got, I got two t-shirts in the mail on my birthday from King Hap. They fit perfectly. I'm going to be... Videoing tomorrow night with Phil Chaplin. I won't give away my ball cap yet, <laughs> but I will give away my t-shirt. It's going to be the happy hour t-shirt. You got to love it. You got to watch. We're going to give you more information than you will ever be able to digest in one hour. I promise you. And if you think the shows you hear on ESPN are good, well, I guarantee you Chappie and I will do better. There you go. Bet on it. Count on it. That's tomorrow night. But right now, Impressed with Cespedes playing. I tell you, I'm also the Mets batting Cano third two nights in a row. There you go. You can take from that what you want to. J.D. Davis looked pretty good out in the outfield and batting. So I think J.D. Davis will be getting some at bats. The Mets didn't score a lot of runs. The bullpen looked pretty good. I thought Familia and Diaz and Batances looked pretty good Saturday night. Draw your conclusions as you watch the game, but that's what I took away from the Mets side of the coin. Now, on the Yankees side, again, I'm not looking at who wins and loses. I'm looking at one thing that's for sure. About two weeks ago, when they started this summer league, summer training, whatever you want to call it, spring training too, it was very clear, Ed, that the first week Pitchers were way ahead of the hitters. And watching last night, the Yankees hit five home runs. And Judge hit two. Sanchez hit one. Voight hit one. And the one Giancarlo Stanton hit may still be in the air. I, it was a total 
rock blast into outer space. Wow, I felt like I was on the Jetsons. And then they show the baseball as it hits the step, trickle down like a slinky all the way down to the bottom floor. It was a long way down for that baseball. The hitters are catching up. They're catching up with the pitching. And could it not be at a better time with opening day on Thursday when the Yankees and the Nationals play? Now in Nationals Park, they're not playing in some triple-A, single-A stadium. They're going to play in the nation's capital as they should, the defending World Series champions against the team who has and flies more flags than any other, the New York Yankees. We're going to follow that up on Thursday with the Dodgers and the Giants. If you want a rivalry that goes way back, it doesn't get much deeper than that. And so as we get closer to Thursday, the hitters are now catching up with the pitching. So what did I draw from the Yankees side of that coin? First of all, have you guys ever heard of a guy named Jordan Montgomery? I, absolutely dominant. I, I, both sides of the plate, up and down in the zone, throwing 96, off of TJ surgery. I, I could talk about Jordan Montgomery all morning, but I won't. But I could. It was, you gave it like two hits, very dominant, at a time, remember, when now the hitters are catching up with the pitching. I can see Montgomery slotting in as the season rolls on, it's to the third the third starter for the Yankees. I mean, maybe even as good as Paxton, if not better. He looked really good. I know it was a spring training game. I get that. I know you can't take but so much from it. But when a kid's throwing 96 and he's spotting it on the corners and he's up and down in the zone, he's getting swinging strikes, well, you got to pay attention to that. And Saturday night, I watched Michael King. Michael King, Lenny touched on this a few minutes ago, reading the box scores. I'm going to dive deep on Michael King for just a moment. And I don't know yet that the Yankees will or will not put him on the opening day. But I do know this. Saturday night against the Mets, the first inning, the ball was up. Okay, I love it. Phil Chappell looked past the nest. He did look like Big Maple. He, you know who he reminded me of? Let's go back to Montgomery. Since Phil Chaplin has chimed in in the chat room, let's go back to Jordan Montgomery. He also looks a little bit like Andy Pettit. And look, Michael Conforto walks early in the game. He's on first base. And we know Michael Conforto is not Ricky Henderson, right? He's not going to steal you 15 bags this year, but he's got just an, what I call an average lead off first base and almost nonchalant-like, Jordan Montgomery picks him off. I mean, he didn't even throw a bullet over to first base. It was almost like he lobs it over to first base. He picks off the base runner. Yet another element of his game. And so, somewhat like Paxton, somewhat like Pettit, he throws a little more compact across his body, hard to pick up the ball, and it moves like crazy. What more can you want from a starting left-handed pitcher pitching for the New York Yankees? And the Red Sox fans, they don't like it at all. At any rate, let's move on. Michael King, Lenny touched on him. He pitched Saturday night. Last year was out with an injury. But in 2018, his last year in minor league ball for the Yankees, he was their minor league pitcher of the year. That's right, their minor league pitcher of the year. That year he was their number five overall prospect. He had a strikeout to walk ratio of 5.2 to 1. He was international player of the month in August of 2018 with a 3-0, 1.09 ERA. He was acquired from the Marlins in November of 2017, an honor student at Boston College. So he's got the intellect to go with the physical ability. Michael King, angular, throws across the body. The ball moves east to west and west to east. Keep your eye on Michael King. The Yankees, 
I just don't see any way they can't finish first in the American League East, barring some injury. Aaron Judge looks totally healed. He hit two home runs last night. If, if a sore neck makes you hit like Aaron Judge, give me three sore necks. Yeah, I'm telling you, bring it. And how do you feel when Miguel Andujar is either your 10th or 11th bat? And Talkman starts Saturday night and gets a few hits. They're deep. They're talented. Both sides of the ball. The Yankees, and here we go. I got them number one in the East. We're going to go through the East this morning. I got them number one in the East. And I got them with a really good record at 44 and 16 over 60 games. I think they're that good. Now remember, they got 10 games with the Orioles. Last year, the Yankees, I think, finished the season winning 15 straight against Baltimore. I don't know what the overall record is. I really don't know this. Maybe you guys in the chat room can help me. Maybe you guys listening on podcasts know the answer. I don't know what the consecutive game winning streak is against another team. But I could see with 15 last year and 10 more this year, the Yankees could have won 20, could win 25 straight against Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, not good. A double A, triple A kind of team playing in a major league park. I got the, let's go to the bottom of the order. I know Austin Hayes is probably the best player they have. Alberto may be the best hitter they have. There's not a lot else on that team I want on my fantasy team, if any at all. And it depends on the depth of your league, if you even have an Oriole. I'm in an 18, eight team league. That's right. E-I-G-H-T, and there isn't an Oriole on anyone's team. No shock there, right? And then they get news over the weekend that John Means, who had been named their opening day starter, is now out indefinitely. So you go from bad to batter. Jack Youngblood said the Orioles only had two wins against the Yankees last year. And Jack, if I'm not mistaken, they won the first two they played. And the Yankees won the rest. So it may be 17 in a row. But it was a long winning streak last year against the Orioles. I'm predicting the Orioles to win 14 games. 14. And I'm hard-pressed, really, to tell you who are they going to beat. But let's say they get 14. Let's say they get two against each of the American League East. Two. That would be eight wins. And then they're going to play the Nationals six times. Do you think they'll beat the Nationals at all? Then they got the other teams in the American League. I I think 14 games is really about it. If that many. This could be a year where if things really went south quickly... For the O's, they could have single-digit wins. I know that sounds ridiculous. Why do I bring this up? Stay away from Orioles in fantasy. I want players who play on winning teams. Now, I know they're going to score some runs, but they're not going to score a lot. And Jack, pardon me, I hate to talk about the birds, but Baltimore did nothing in the offseason to improve their immediate future. Now, Compare them or contrast them, if you will, to the Detroit Tigers. Detroit, not very good. And they got news over the weekend that Jordan Zimmerman is going on the 45-day IL, which I think hastens the appearance of either or Mize or Manning in Detroit. I think the Motor City will see both of those pitchers this year. You're going to have to wait a week, guys. They're not going to bring them up day one. They're going to bring them up day seven. And then you're going to have Manning and Mize the m M&M boys pitching in the Motor City, that will be something to see. Those kids can throw. But Detroit, compared or contrasted to Baltimore, they do go out and get C.J. Cron. Good morning, Andrea. They do go out and get C.J. Cron. They do go out and get Jonathan Scope. They do some things to make their team Now better, and they still have the Riley Greens coming down the road from the farm to help in the future. Detroit, I think, 
is going to be 